أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين محمد وأحل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة على أعدائهم من الآن إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد والفركان الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي زدني علما صدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله hope everyone is well and as we are in the revision mode revising book two um, and also as I mentioned to yourself I will give you additional information to enhance your understanding of book two so that once we start book three um, everyone has a understanding of some of the concepts which we discussed in book two itself um, can I request um, what sister Homai you've actually started off um, with on a positive note so I would like you to um, read the actual this uh, handout about the nominal sentence so before we start the nominal sentence so the nominals in Arabic language um, there are two types of sentences um, you have a verbal sentence and you have a nominal sentence a verbal sentence is a sentence where a verb starts a sentence and a nominal sentence it's when a noun starts a sentence and <clears throat> there are certain nouns which are entitled for them to become the subject of a sentence so a nominal sentence has two parts it has a subject and a predicate a mubtada and khabar in arabic terms mubtada and khabar so these are the two parts of a nominal sentence uh, and there are some certain requirements for a mubtada and khabar itself and i'll go through them and then I'll apply it on book two so that you will understand. So Bismillah, Sister Huma Zabi. <clears throat> the nominal sentence, al jamlatul ismiyatu. Hmm? The basic nominal sentence. Arabic sentences are of two types, nominal and verbal. The type of sentence is identified simply by examining the word at the beginning of the sentence. If a word is noun, then the sentence is non-verbal. Nominal sentence are al jumlatul ismayatu. If the sentence begins with a verb, then you have a verbal sentence. Al jumlatul fa'alatu. Filiatu. Correct. Each sentence type has its own rules. Since we have thoroughly discussed the grammar of words and word construction, familiarizing with the Normal sentence should not be too long. Nominal sentence has two components, a subject, mubtada, and a predicate, khabar. The predicate serves to give information about the subject. Unlike English, Arabic has no specific words for is. In grammar, in uh, Arabic, there's hidden or implied is between the subject and the predicate. A simple way to differentiate between the subject and the predicate is by looking at the definiteness of the two. Since the predicate gives information about the subject, both have to match in gender, number, and also the rough case. This is the way I got yes. stuck, rough yes. case. This is what I'm going to explain now. This here is the most important part of this handout itself. Since the predicate, what is the predicate? The khabar. Gives the information about the subject. Both have to match in gender. So, meaning that if we're talking about a lady in the sentence, like, um, so for example, we're saying Fatima to Fatima is knowledgeable. Fatima is knowledgeable. So Fatima is a female. Now, because she is a female, the actual the predicate has also be in the feminine form so we cannot say Fatima to Alemun but we will say Fatima to Alematun so it follows each other and also do you remember last lesson 
um, I think it was the last lesson, when I spoke about mudaf, mudaf ilay. Do you remember that? Right. Do you remember that when I said, whenever you have mudaf and mudaf ilay as a subject, like, for example, kitabullahi, kitabullahi, book, last book is jamilun. So always, whenever, so you can either have one noun being a subject, or either you can have a mudaf, mudaf ilay. So whenever mudaf, mudaf ilay is the subject, the mudaf itself, the first word in a mudaf, will govern whether the subject is going to come feminine or masculine. Do you remember that last week? Right, correct. Like, I think there was two examples. One was... Um, Hakibat, I'll give you an example. Hakibatu, Hakibatu Muhammadin. So the word Hakiba, is it masculine or female? Hakibatu Muhammadin means Muhammad's bag. Is it masculine or female? Hakibatun. It will be masculine. Sir. No, Hakibatu. Hakibatu is a feminine. Yes. Muhammad is masculine, but the word Hakiba itself, it's feminine. So if I want to say Muhammad. Muhammad's bag is beautiful. Um, so we will look at Hakibatu, see if it's masculine or female. When we realize it's feminine, the khabar itself, the, the predicate itself, will also come feminine. So if you want to say Muhammad's bag is beautiful, how would we say this in an Arabic? Jamilatun. MashaAllah, Batul Banji. Ahsanti. Barakallah feek. Excellent. But sir, I we I don't know which word is a feminine and which word is a masculine. Okay, very good question. So, um, as I mentioned to yourself before, whenever you have a noun, a time marbut at the end, do you remember that? Yeah. Whenever you have a time marbut at the end, that's a feminine noun. Okay. 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 Sometimes we are using a time marbuta and then we say it's open ta. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so the, the, the there's two the timer buta is for the singular and then the flat ta is used for the plural. So the flat ta is for the plurals itself. But it from the fa for the feminine plurals. Yep, 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 that's right. So the feminine plurals um, normally will have a leaf and a flat ta at the end. Open ta. Open ta, yes, flat mabsuta. Okay? So you normally have that itself. Uh, I'll I'll go through the less it's uh, the actual text itself, and then I'll explain this further. And when it says here, uh, both have to match in gender number. number. Number meaning, for example, if it's singular, plural, it comes singular. Like... If it's dual, it comes dual. If it's plural, it comes plural. <clears throat> and then also rough. So remember this point. Rough means. The a nominative case. Raf means nominative case, meaning that <clears throat> whenever you have mubtada and khabar, like, do you remember in book one, al kitabu jamilun? Do you remember that in book one? Yeah. So when we said al kitabu jamilun, I, I I did remember I was emphasizing, remember mentioning that whenever you have a noun, always give the noun. <coughs> Okay. <coughs> Always give the noun a dhamma, dhamma or a dhamma tanween. So this is the actual default Arab for a subject and predicate. So rough case we are saying meaning it should be a dhamma or dhamma tanween. Exactly, <clears throat> exactly. The, the the subject itself, the subject itself, um, should have a dhamma or a dhamma tanween, and the khabar itself comes always with dhamma. Tanween. Uh, khabar will be only with Zama. Yes, always with Zama Tanween. Okay. Always with Zama Tanween. That's the ruling because the actual Khabar itself is always indefinite. Indefinite meaning without Alif Lam. <clears throat> that means that's what is rough is. Yeah, rough means when a noun receives a Dhamma or a Dhamma Tanween. That's what rough means. Okay. It doesn't mean rough in the sense that someone is scru a scruffy and rough. Not in that sense. It means... No, I think it was the form of some word we, which, which I'm, I don't understand. I tried to look back for as, as this is going on now. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the word raf, it's an Arabic word, um, which means when a noun receives a dhamma. Okay, thank you, Sheikh. You're welcome. Uh, Sheikh, can I quickly ask something? Yes, yes, Bismillah. Uh, yeah, okay, so my question is, you said um, Kabar will always have uh, dhamma thing. Is this when Kabar is only one word, right? Excellent, yes. So thank you. when the word is one, it will have a dhamma tanween, but sometimes you can have a khabar, which is a composition of two words as well together. Very good question. There are many of them, right? Khabar yeah. is... Um. We'll cover that, inshallah. We'll cover that as well. How many types of khabar... But remember the default Arab that the um, subject itself comes with a dhamma or a dhamma tanween, and the, kh the khabar always comes with a dhamma tanween as long as it's one word. But if it's a, a composition, then there's a slight changes but always it's still the Arab for all subject and predicate it's rough dhamma okay <clears throat> is this clear yes yes thank, thank you. you and then it says the key different uh difference is that predicate is typically indefinite see this yeah mm -hmm. as i said just earlier another concept that is important to keep in mind since we covered word construction in the previous chapter is that both subject and predicate can be entire word constructions so when i mean in word construction um you can have like for example just remember this and i'll explain this once we start the syntax class i'll explain that in that class itself but sometimes you can like mudaf mudafile like mudaf mudafile kitabullahi it's two words it's two words together and there's a composition which is made um it comes as a muqtada but sometimes you can have um a subject and predicate together listen to this point careful you sometimes can have a subject and predicate together coming as a verbal a nominal sentence as a khabar as well Once again, so sometimes you can have a subject and predicate, muptada and khabar together, and the being... same speak can be called. Uh, that's what I had in mind. I said, when is it a subject and predicate? When is it mubta and khabar? I'll show you. I'll show you. To, uh, give me two minutes. Let me go through this. I'll go. Through, I'll show you the sheet. Uh, which I thought is... they're the same names. No. Mubtada and Khabar, this predicate is like they're the same names. Yeah, yeah. So what happens? You have a complete sentence, which is Mubtada and Khabar, but the Mubtada and Khabar together, both of them together, is coming as the Khabar for the subject as well. Nominal sentence. Exactly, a nominal sentence. I'll show you. I'll, if you give me about a couple of minutes, I'll show you on the screen uh, examples of that as well. I'll show you some examples, inshallah. Okay, then <clears throat> please note the following rules for nominal sentences. Bismillah, Sister Omar. A nominal sentence consists of two components, a subject, muptada, and a predicate, khabar. Mm -hmm. Second, this is an implied, unwritten, is, is between the subject and the predicate. Okay, let me explain this. Now, as I mentioned to yourself in the Arabic language, we don't have is in Arabic so the Arab itself the Arab meaning the Dhamma Tanween or the Dhamma itself that actually creates that relationship of the subject and the predicate together for example when we say al, um, al, um, let's use the word Al Maktabu al, uh, sorry let's uh, change it Al Kalamu Maksurun Al Kalamu Maksurun what does it translate to be? The pen is broken. Broken pen. Yeah, the, the pen is broken. Al kalamu maksurun. So, al kalamu maksurun. So you have al kalamu maksurun. So the word maksurun has a dhamma tanween. Correct. Correct. Uh -huh. Now this is getting a dhamma tanween because it has a relationship with al kalamu. If kalam wasn't there this relationship would have not occurred. So that maksurun dhamma tanween is 
indicating that this is the khabar for the pen itself. So the dhamma tanween on maksuran, it, this implies that this is the actual subject for the predicate itself. When we say al-qalamu maksurun. Yeah, one and two. Is that clear? Yeah. So whenever you have this, uh, uh, this the words, when they come together, it's a hinder, a hidden implication where there is, there's no is in the actual text itself. Al-qalamu maksur is two words. Qalam, pen, maksur, broken. And the dhamma tanween on maksurun is the thing which highlights that there is a... In Arabic, we call it a isnad. Isnad is the word which is used for relation between the two words together. Right. Is that clear, Sister um, Sister Zamina, Sister Sakina, Sister Sharabano, Dr. Rahim? Yes, Sheikh. Yes, Thank you. Sister Zahra? Yes, Sheikh. It's clear. Sister Abida, how about yourself? I'm still taking it in, but yes, clear. <laughs> so everybody had trouble. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'll give you more information. I'll give you some more exercises and practice. Don't worry. Okay, and then after this, number three, the subject comes before the implied is and is generally definite. If the sentence starts with a noun, that noun is the subject. Okay, the subject comes before the implied is so this is what i mentioned last lesson as well that whenever you have whenever you want to understand where is a subject and the predicate translate it in english whatever comes before is whatever is, comes be, is the subject and it always comes definite meaning either it's a proper noun like muhammad name of a person or a noun with alif lam like al kitabu so Al-Kitabu, it's a, it's a definite noun. Muhammadun is a proper noun as well. Okay, that's the number three. Number four, the predicate comes after the implied is and is generally indefinite, as I said to yourself already. So the khabar itself, the khabar itself normally comes with a dhamma tanween, if it's one word. If it's one word, it comes with a dhamma tanween. This is the default ruling. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Uh, Sheikh, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Um, so, um, you mean that uh, if by one word you mean like uh, jamilatun? Yes. That's one word. That's but right. for two words could be a mudaf mudaf ilay. Is that what, what it means? So if, no, if it, so, sometimes the rule, the default ruling is that the khabar itself comes indefinite. If it's one word, it comes indefinite. However, sometimes you can have mudaf mudaf ilay as the khabar as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so in that case, it will be uh, exactly. slightly different in the rule. Exactly, exactly. Then then there's an exception as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or so, uh, Sheikh, we can have also. And yes. Then... yes, yes. I'll, I'll do this now after this. After I've covered this page, I will go through that as well. So what I'm going to do today, today's lesson, I'm going to cover everything on subject and predicate so that everyone has a really good understanding on this subject. Thank you. Okay, then we are both, the, both the subject and predicate are rough. So when I mean rough, it means that it should, like, example, you can write this down. Write this down, everyone. Zaydun or Muhammadun. Muhammadun. Zakiyun. Or Muhammadun Talibun. Muhammadun Talibun. Translation is Muhammad is a student. Muhammadun Talibun. So here, both of these words are having <coughs> dhamma tanween. Muhammadun talibun. So this is subject and predicate. Muhammadun talibun. Okay. Muhammadun talibun. Next example. Al-kitabu 
Jamilun. Al Kitabu Jamilun. The book is beautiful. Al Kitabu Jamilun. The book is beautiful. Beautiful. So in this case here, we are having Al Kitabu definite with Alif Lam. And it has one Dhamma. Jamilun has the Dhamma Tanween. So both of these words are in the state of rough, That's meaning right. that they are in the nominative case. Okay. Is that clear, Dr. Rahim? Yes, yes. Th thank you. Thank you. Please repeat, uh, take please repeat. Yes, yes. So the word Al Kitabu, it's a definite noun with Alif Lam. And it has a Dhamma. And this Dhamma is called um, rough. Rough meaning the sign of a Dhamma. And Jamilun is the Khabar and it's indefinite because as we have learned, the default Arab for the Khabar is rough, um, Dhamma Tanween, indefinite. Yeah, Al Kitabu Jamilun, correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, number six. Sheikh, question. Yes. Uh, if I'm in into Muzaf and Muzaf, yep. Muhammad and Taliban or Al Kitabu Jamilun, what am I going to say? How Which will one? we differentiate? Which one? If it's Muzaf, Muzaf, yeah. How are we okay, going you, to say different? Okay, I'll give you an example. Write this example down. Kitabullahi Jamilun. What will be the third word added? Yes. Kitabullahi Jamilun. The translation will be Allah's book is beautiful. Beautiful. Kitabullahi Jamilun. Allah's book is beautiful. So here we have mudaf and mudaf ilay, and it's coming as the mubtada, sorry, subject. And jamilun is indefinite. So here we are saying kitabullahi is the subject and jamilun is the predicate? Yes. And mubtada? Mubtada, And the mudaf, mudaf ilay will be, how will we going to say? So mudaf, mudaf ilay is the subject. Kitabun will be Muzaf. Kitab, kitab is Muzaf. So Kitabullah, Kitab is Muzaf. Allah is Muzaf ilay. And then it becomes the subject, the Mubtada. Uh, Sheikh, yep. Sheikh I, I have a, a small question. So in this case, is it wrong to say Jamilun is Sifa or we can't Khabar. say? It? Khabar. It's only Khabar. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Because Sifa you. always follows the actual. Um, the noun which is describing if it's definite oh, yeah. or indefinite. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Sister Huma, is that clear? Sister Abida? Yes, Sheikh. Thank you. Um, it, it, this lesson is going to be a, a, a bit quite intense, so please bear with me. I'm going to I'll explain everything. As long as you listen, I'll explain everything, okay? Okay, now let's go to the examples now, okay? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ربي يسر ولا تؤسف تمام خير. Are you not finished number six? Number six. Non-verbal sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The non-verbal sentence can have other details after the predicate that give additional information. So the non-verbal sentence can have other details after the predicate that give additional information okay so what it means it means that <clears throat> i'll give you an example i'll give you so basically it's trying to say that you can have the subject and the predicate write this down if you want to write this down mm -hmm. for number six it means that you can have the subject and the predicate and you can also have, for example, uh, a preposition as well. You can have a press, a press fine. So after the khabar comes, you also have a jar and majroor in the sentence as well. Shall I give you an example? Please. Shall I give you an example, everyone? Yes? Please. 
Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Write this down. I'll give you an example. Asayaratu. Asayaratu. What does asayaratu mean? Car. Car. Yes. Asayaratu jamilatun. What does that mean? Asayaratu. Beautiful car. The car is beautiful. The car is beautiful. The car is beautiful. Okay. Now, this is subject and predicate. And here it's saying that non verbal. A non verbal, it means it's a nominal sentence. Can have other details after the predicate. So, Jamilatun is the predicate. Yes? Yes? Yes. Now, I can say, Asayaratu Jamilatun Fishari'i. Fishari'i. What does that mean? In the street. Exactly. In so this is additional information which is coming after the predicate and that's perfectly fine. Mashallah, everyone's understanding. This is fine. Yes. You're a good student then. You're really quiet. Sheikh, how would you translate that? The car is beautiful in the street? The, 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 the beautiful the car... car in the street. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. a, a sayyara to jamila to fishari. The beautiful car, the yeah. car is beautiful in the street. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, the car is beautiful in the street. Can you also have a sayyaratu fishari jamilatun? Sorry, doctor, repeat again. A sayyaratu fishari jamilatun. So a sayyaratu fishari jamilatun. You can do it that way as well, that uh -huh. the car is in the street, um, but it, grammatically it doesn't seem that correct. I see. Not, it, it, having that type of relationship is no need. You would normally say, Asayar Jamilat and Fishari. It's uh -huh. more correct this way. Well, what if I write, sir, uh, the beautiful car in the street? Okay, then it's slightly different. Then it's, then, uh, okay, I, I should give someone a reward if someone answers this correctly sure. sister batul manji asked a very good question if i can say... i answer okay who um let me if i say the beautiful car listen to this carefully everyone the beautiful car is in the street now is beautiful coming as a subject or a pre uh, or as an adjective. It's, it's subject and adjective. How do you both. know? It's both. No, no, it's not. It's adjective. Only adjective. The beautiful can... car. Yeah, when you say the beautiful car, then it's only an, uh, you cannot have a noun being an adjective and a subject. Oh, it has to be the car is beautiful for it to be an adjective. Time. Remember this point beautiful car it becomes an adjective it is not a predicate anymore it's not a statement you're making anymore uh, no i mean so, Chip, when you say, when you say uh, a sayyar... al jamila too yeah. that is the, just the adjective exactly but when you complete the sentence then it can be used as a subject as well no 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 no, no? So, it will still so, remain an adjective yeah so so what will happen let me explain to yourself when you say a sayyara to Let me so so a sayaratu al jamilatu means the beautiful car because it has sifa mausuf, it follows the same Arab, okay? And then if you say fishari, this jar and majroor, so you can have this voice, you can either have an indefinite noun. What's an indefinite noun? Kitabun, sorry, jamilun, yes. Jamilun is indefinite noun, correct? Yes. Jamilun. Yeah, yeah. A preposition. Yeah. Preposition. What's a preposition? Harfajar. Right? Fishar. Yeah, harfajar. In, in, in. So, yeah, harfajar can also come as a khabar. Harfajar. Like, so harfajar can also come as a khabar. Is that clear for everyone? Harfajar. Fishari can also can come as a khabar. That's the second type of khabar you can have. Is this clear for everyone? 
Can, can you give an example of that? Yes, this example which our sister Batul Manjia said, As-sayaratu al-jamilatu fi shari'i. So the, here, here, the beautiful, so the word al-jamilatu is coming as an adjective for the car. So the adjective and the noun together is coming as the subject. So the word al-jamilatu is an adjective mm -hmm. for the subject, which is the car. So mm -hmm. the subject, so the, the car and al-jamilatu is the mubtada together. What is it? It is the mubtada together. And fishari'i in the street, fishari'i is the khabar itself. So when I translate in English, have a look. The beautiful car is, where is, is coming? The beautiful car is in the street. It's coming before fee. Exactly. So is that clear for you, Zahra and Musuma? So Sheikh, over here, like you said, as sayaratu al jamilatu. That will be the muptada. The whole thing will be the muptada. Yeah, as sayaratu al jamilatu is the muptada. Correct. Okay. Because it's the jamilatu has become definite as well, right? With the exactly, exactly. If it's indefinite, if it's indefinite, then it becomes the khabar. Then it becomes the khabar, but because it's because it's got it's definite because of the al, then it becomes the yeah. subject. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, it's growing. <laughs> but how and, can and, and, so in the Jamila in the Jamila the, the, the term becomes only the man or the matanween. Exactly. So if it's with a uh, dhammatanween, then it's the khabar. Yes. If it comes with a dhamma, then it becomes the mubtada as an adjective for a sayyaratu. <coughs> Mashallah, everyone's doing very well. Mashallah, I think um, every, well, Alhamdulillah, everyone is working very hard. Excellent. Is mm -hmm. this clear, everyone? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's go on. Let's go to the next page now. Now, let me explain. Sister, um, Sister Sadiqa Jafar, is this clear for you? Mm -hmm. Sister Sadiqa Jafar. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I, I am getting closer to it, yes. I don't say <laughs> Percent. Okay, no, that's fine. I'll I'll give you much more practice. So yeah. uh, as long as you're writing these down, inshallah, I'll give you much more practice. And when I start the actual syntax class, I will cover this again for everything to sink in properly, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely getting in now. Alhamdulillah. So let's look over here now. Al Beitu. So Sister Sadiqa Jafar, come on the mic. Al Beitu Kabirun. Where is the subject and where is the khabar? Beitu Kabirun. The subject is um, is the house, the baitu, yep. and the kabirun, how big it is, that's the khabar. Exactly. And what is the sign of the khabar here? What do what have we learned? What did I mention about the quality and the criteria of the khabar? What Arab would the khabar normally have if it's one word by itself? It's the Dhamma Tanween. Excellent. Excellent. So the Dhamma Tanween kabirun is indicating that this is the khabar itself clear yeah yeah how would you how do you say in arabic the big house al baytu kabirun al baytu al kabiru al kabiru yes al kabiru so now when you say al baytu al kabiru do we have the word is anywhere no no correct no so if I want to say uh, the uh, the big house is old, the big house is old. How would we say that in Arabic? Al-Baytu, al Kabiru, Kadimun. Kadimun. Yes. Kadimun. No, no, not without without the timer, both the doctor, because al Baytu is masculine. I see. Al so Albaytu Al Kabiro becomes the big Kabiru. house. What about the big house? It is so Kadimun. Kadimun. So mm -hmm. why are we given Kadimun of the Matanween? Because that's the cover. That's Excellent. The mashallah, mashallah. Excellent. And why if we said Al Baytu Al Kabiro Al Kadimu, what does the 
what position does Al Qadimu will have then? If we didn't, if we changed it from Qadimun to Al Qadimu, how would we translate the sentence? Al Baytu Al Kabiru Al Qadimu. The big old house. Yes, the, the big old house. house. It will be muttal. Everything will be muttal. Exactly. So the big... everything is becoming definite. Exactly. Mm -hmm. check, oh. check, please repeat that. So is that the big old house? Yes. So Al Baytu Al Kabiru. Al Qadimu, the big old house. So all of that becomes the subject because Al Kabiru is an adjective mm -hmm. and Al Qadimu is a second adjective as well. Yeah. The, the, the house, everything is big old yeah. house. Everything comes indefinite. So if it's all of it indefinite, all of it becomes the subject. Al Baytu, Al Kabiru, Al Qadimu. Yeah. So this is not a sentence then? Exactly, it's not a sentence. To make a sentence, this whole big sentence, I'll, I'll tell you how you make it. So you will say, al baytu al kabiru al qadimu Amam al masjidi MashaAllah, I should give you some <laughs> chocolate sweets for that. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. al baytu al kabiru al qadimu Amam al Masjidi, fantastic. That's a hundred. I'll give you a star for that, um, Sister I'll be happy if you don't. I'll be happy if you just mark my exam on that basis. <laughs> <laughs> that was so brilliant. That was really good. Oh, mashallah, that was really good. So the big. So all three are subject, and then Al. Uh, Amam al, yeah. Amam Amam al Masjidi. Masjidi is the khabar. Excellent. Amam al Masjidi is mudaf, mudaf ilay, and the khabar itself. Check also Kabiru and Kadimu are both adjectives for Al Bayt. Correct. Okay, thank you. Correct. So in Imam al Masjidi, now we are saying this is Muzaf and Muzafile? Exactly. Muzaf, Muzafile, and it's the Khabar. And the Khabar. MashaAllah, I'm teaching you at second year two level in the Hosea oh. now. What I'm teaching you now. Mm -hmm. And that's no, that's no exaggeration. Uh, Thank you, Sheikh. You're an excellent teacher. Mm -hmm. I don't think we would have been this ahead or we would have understood mm -hmm. it that well if it was another teacher, but you, you do. I mean, you do a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. So here, if we have a look over here now, al -bayto kabirun. So this is the normal default ruling of the subject and predicate. So the muftada itself comes normally with alif lam, as it says definite. And definite meaning rough. It has the dhamma there, okay? Kabirun, indefinite. And it's the khabar itself. And it's they put the word is between it. The house is big. So this is a nominal sentence. Is that clear, brothers and sisters? Yes. Then we have the other thing, which is an example of subject and predicate, is hadha kitabun. Hada is the subject. Kitabun has a dhamma tanween. It is the khabar. So it didn't have a, We said subject and predicate. They should have the same. Yes. But hada. Yes. Good question. Hada is a. In, it's a fixed noun. It doesn't take the harakat. So the harakat is hidden on hada. And it, it, it's actually situated in the place of the subject even though the harakat is not visible. Like, is that what you would call mabni or no? Um, I, I didn't want to use the, mab use the word mabni because I just was oh. scared of that. You may say there's too many new vocab you're using. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Mabni is the correct word. Thank you. And ulaika muslimuna. So here is another example. Ulaika muslim. Look at the translation. Those are Muslims. Ulaika muslim. Muslimuna. Those are Muslims. So Those this is again another fixed noun? Yes. Yeah, so Ulaika is the fixed noun again. Um, where Ulaika is the subject, is Mabni, mm -hmm. and Muslimuna is the Khabar. Sister Abida, you okay? Sister Zinat, Sister 
Yes. I'm yes. so happy everybody was in the same boat mm. because the way they were all quiet, <laughs> it was mm. now you know why. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. Uh, okay, now let me explain. Okay, now this is one point which is on here. I, I might as well do this because you've read this and I don't want to, uh, I need to explain this. <clears throat> now remember this. So whenever you have subject and predicate, mm -hmm. you both of the nouns are always mm -hmm. with a dhamma. Dhamma tanween or a dhamma, correct? Al bayto kabirun, yes? Yes. Yeah. Now there's one exception. Remember this exception now. Um, who, sh who shall who shall I bring on the mic? Let's bring Sister um, Sadiqa Jafar. Mm -hmm. Sister Sadiqa Jafar. Yeah. Can you kindly read subject and predicate? No, A. Subject. It is generally definite. Definite and rough. Yep. It, it can be nas. However, when the noon. When inna. inna. When inna. inna begins a sentence excellent let me explain to this now i will cover this but just as a point to remember just remember as a point it's not important that you know this now i'll mm -hmm. give you an example whenever like what does the, when what does the word allahu qadirun mean allahu all powerful. powerful all powerful yes allahu qadirun mm -hmm. can everyone write this in arabic please or do you want me to send it to the WhatsApp group? Please. If there's any word which you cannot spell, just message me. Uh, just it's, it's, speak, come on the mic and tell me, and I'll write it in Arabic for you. I can write it in the chat also, Sheikh, if you want. Um, Please. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll write it on the, on the group as well. Allahu. I'll write this down so that. Everyone has the right everyone has the right spelling. Allah Qadirun, the translation is Allah is powerful, all powerful. So Allah, when you say Allah Qadirun, this is mm -hmm. subject and predicate, Mubtada mm -hmm. and Khabar. Okay? Is that clear? Okay. Now there is a new thing which I'm going to teach you today. Mm -hmm. This is Inna. Now, Inna, everyone has, has seen it in the Quran. Yes. Inna. Yes. Inna Allaha wa malaikatahu. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We are not saying Inna Allaha. Yeah. Inna Allahu wa malaikatu. Correct? That's incorrect. Is that correct? Yeah. We always say Inna Allaha wa malaikatahu. The ta has a fata and Allah has a fata, correct? Yeah. Yes. This is the this is the Abba this inna. is the act of inna. That's what inna does. So inna is a is a, a particle which changes the dhamma to a fata. Is that clear? Yes. It changes. Inna is, is a particle that changes the subject into a fata? Yes, it changes the subject to a fata itself. It is khabar inna, isn't it? It's khabar inna. No, ism of inna and the khabar of inna. Yes. Mm. <coughs> look in the chat, look in the WhatsApp group. I wrote it down. So, inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya yuhalladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So here, in this ayah which is famous, Inna allaha wa malaikatahu. So Inna Allah, Allah and the malaika. Both of them are the subject. Correct? Both of them are the subject. And because of Inna, they are getting a fata. The khabar itself, the khabar. Is Yusalluna in Allah wa malaikatahu. What is what is Allah and the Malaika doing? Sending. 
exactly. Yusalluna ala nabi. So yusalluna is a verb. Yusalluna is a verb. So yusalluna ala nabi. This is a verbal sentence. And this verbal sentence is coming as the khabar of inna Allah wa malaikatahu. The khabar of inna. Khabar of inna, yeah. So it can... Okay. We'll look in, look in the chat box. I wrote the basic example. In Allah Qadirun. So originally it was Allahu Qadirun, but when Inna, when Inna comes, it changes the the, the Arab of Allah, which had a dhamma to a fatah. So it becomes In Allah Qadirun. Qadirun remains with the dhamma. The only thing happens is the actual the subject the mubtada. Changed it yeah. to al fatah Is that clear? Yeah. yeah. So inna becomes the subject. No. In Allah. No. Allah, no. Allah, Allah. Allah is a subject of inna. Yeah. And it has a fatah itself. That's what inna does. It just changes the subject, uh, irab, from a dhamma to a fatah So it becomes inna Allah. Yes, in Allah Qadirun. And the translation is, sorry, I wrote, uh, um, let me write, indeed Allah is all powerful. Let me just change the translation. So, inna is indeed? Yes, indeed. Inna comes in the meaning of indeed, uh, emphasis. Indeed. Indeed, is all. Indeed, in Allah, indeed, Allah is all powerful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, can I quickly ask something, please? Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so, in in the other sentence which you told us, in Allah wa malaikatuhu. Wa malaikatuhu. Yeah. Ikatuhu. Okay. So, so everything from Allah and the angels are both the ism ism of inna. Correct. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Nice. Let's Sister Sadiqa, Bismillah. Can you continue number two? Unmute yourself and come on the mic, please. Bismillah. Uh, it is present at, uh, at the start of a sentence. Please Correct. note that the typical ayah of the Quran is often composed of many sentences and thus can have many embedded nominal and verbal sentences within yep so just trying to say sometimes you have many types of inna and so forth as well. so inna yeah. normally comes and it's sometimes we'll, we'll do more practice on this it's just trying to teach you something new here and point number three the subject can be entire word construction possession pointing describing constructions and thus can be can be composed of two or more nouns so as we said, sometimes I'll do this with you, that sometimes you have a whole word of sentences together and it comes as a um, subject or a predicate, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's go on to the next page. Bismillah. Um, let's get Sister, who should we get? I think Sister Abida, so you've missed all of Shah Ramadan. Sister Abida, can you come on the mic? Yes. The predicate, alaykum salam, the predicate, the khabar. Okay. Sheikh, yes. I have one question. The uh, three uh, fine lines on the previous page. Yes. Page 70. Yeah, the subject Inna, can be... This one here, yeah? Yeah. Inna so, wa akhwatuha. So hear what we are saying. Okay. So, inna itself, there, there is a whole family of innas. That's what it means. Inna wa akhwatiha means inna and its sisters. Indeed. And the sisters? And it, no, so inna, there's inna, and there are some other words as well, which are the, of the same category of inna. Like inna is changing the, the, the subject to a fatha, there's also some other words which do the same action of inna as well. So that's what they call inna and its sisters. That's what it is. Is so, that like 
God, like would you say? No, 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 no. I'll, 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 like that. I'll give you them. I'll, I'll mention okay. them. It's inna, inna, anna. So inna, anna, lakinna. So write them down. Inna, and inna when it comes in the beginning of the sentence. Anna when it comes in the middle of the sentence. Lakinna, lakinna. That's the other one. Lakinna. Um, Lakinna. Later. Later is the other one. Later. Later means uh, I wish. Later means I wish. Later. In Surah, Surah Naba. Ya laytani kuntu. Turaba. Later and la Allah. La Allah is the other one which does the same action of inna. La Allah means I hope. La Allah means I hope. So these are the five words which do the same action what inna does. That's what these are all nasibs. Yes, nasibs. Exactly. Exactly. So as we're doing this, you might say, so Huma, you might as well read this point um, because I was thinking of maybe I can leave it out. But as, as you have highlighted it, can you read this? Inna and its sisters are considered grammatically. A bit different than a nominal sentence. Yep. These nurse particles act on the nominal sentence and cause it to gain a verb like meaning depending of on the part on the particle used. That is why when the particle inna acts on a sentence, the subject becomes nas. Correct. And is termed okay. isme inna. Correct. While the predicate is termed akhbar inna. Khabar inna. Khabar inna. Khabar inna. Exactly. Inna. So, so this, this is causing it to change. Exactly. Exactly. So when this come, the actual. The person who possesses the sentence, it's inna itself. It's called the ism of inna and the khabra of inna. Not the subject of inna, but the ism of inna, the noun of inna. Is that clear? Yeah. So, Sheikh, inna is a ism or is it a verb? It's a noun. It's a, oh, okay, hi, thank you. Okay, next. Um, sister Abida, Bismillah, let's go and quickly go through this. It's already seven o'clock. Bismillah. Okay. Uh, the predicate generally comes after the subject. It is rough. Correct. The predicate agrees in gender, plurality, and iram since it gives information about its subject, but not indefiniteness. Mm -hmm. It is typically indefinite, but please note that exceptions do exist. Cases where the predicate is definite are discussed here later. Okay. Predicate can be an entire word construction, possession, pointing, or describing constructions, and thus be composed of two or more nouns. There are four types of predicates. The simplest one is termed mufrada, which we looked at in previous examples. Yep. So I'll, I'll explain to yourself these examples now, okay? Um, so let me change. With the whole word construction page. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to go on to the next page and explain to yourself. So it's got them over here now, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to, let me go through just one second. So over here, example examples from the holy quran and a hadith okay now subject is red and predicate is blue so wow and he is alimun birati sudur so let's bring one student at a time so let's bring sister abida go come up bismillah let's do the example yeah so here he is knowing what is within the breast itself? So here, Hua is the what? Hua is the subject. Yep. And Alimun is the predicate. Alimun is the predicate, exactly. So here, Ba is coming. Ha, ba is what? Bidat is Sudur. Ba is Harfejar. 
that is mudaf and a sudur is mudaf ilay. So mudaf mudaf ilay uh, is in the position of the uh, genitive case of because of ba, which is a preposition. Remember, we said that after yeah. a prep, after a prep, uh, um, predicate, you can have other additional words as well. So this is an example of a preposition coming after the predicate itself. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so Sheikh, please. Wahova alimun besad al sudur. So wa is and hova is he, and that is the subject. Alimun is uh, the predicate. Yep. Besad the sudur. This is muzaf and muzaf le. Correct. And ba is the preposition. Now, is it all coming alimun besad the sudur in the khabar? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. I didn't want to go to in that many technicalities, but because yes. we have to clear our mind because it gets confusing. No, 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 it's good. I think some, sometimes I, I, I leave things out so that the people um, ask the question themselves. So sometimes if you spoon feed too much, it sometimes it causes a reaction with children. If you spoon feed them too much, they vomit it out. So sometimes what you need to do is feed a little and allow the students ask the question so that they are, are grasping the things as well. Okay, thank you, Shah. So this so is... Yeah, exactly. So the whole thing here, up to there, is the khabar itself. And wa doesn't have to do anything. No, it no, just... wa is a conjunction. It's a particle. Okay. Conjunction. Okay, and uh, let's bring Sister um, Nazneen Juma. Or sister um, Zahra Jamal then. Sister Zahra Jamal? Yes, yes, Sheikh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As-salatu nurun, was-sadaqatu burhanun, was-sabru zi'a'un, wal-Qur'anu hujjatun laka aw alayka. So as-salatu is subject, nurun is predicate. Then uh, as sad as sadaqatu is subject, burhanun mm -hmm. is predicate. Mm -hmm. As sabru subject, dhiaun predicate. Wal Quranu yep. al Quranu subject, hujjatun predicate. And uh, then laka au alaika, I think, is the additional information after yeah. that. Yeah, so this is jara majroor. Yeah. Excellent. Um, next person on the mics. Let's bring Sister uh, Sharabano Khaku. <clears throat> So which is jar and which is here majbur majur? La, la ka. La la ka. Mean, yeah. La ka la means four. Ka is majrur. But it's it's an uh, it's a harf. So it, it's a pronoun. So it's jar is jar majrur still. But the Arab of the kasra is not visible on the ka because it's a as an attached pronoun. And alayka alayka is also jar and majrur because it's ala and ka. Ala means oh. on, ka means you. Jaren Majur. Yep. Okay. Sister Sharbano Haku? Yeah, okay. So number three, right? Yep. Okay. Wallahu basirum bima ta'amalun. Ta'amaluna. So wallahu Allah is here. Mubtada basirun is a khabar. Uh, bima will be harf jarbi. Yep. And ta'amaluna is a wab. Yep. Uh, and that's it. That, that's fine. I, I, I don't. That is, so this itself is a, it's a, it's. Um, yeah, that's it. That, that, I, I don't get in more technicality of this itself at the moment. I'll leave it as it is. Okay, thank you. Next one, Sister Masuma. <clears throat> Adunya. Adunya, Sijnul Mu'mini, wa Jannatul Qahiri. Um, so, Dunya is a subject, um, and then uh, Sijnul Mu'minin is a predicate. And then, wa Jannatul Qahirin is the additional information? Um, no, this is a new sentence. So, this will be uh, here. And... Yeah, so Adunya, Sijnul Mu'min. Oh, it stops there. Okay, yeah. yeah. So and, then, and you can say here, 
this is again the second khabar. Yeah, okay. So the, the word is the uh, a prison for the believer and uh, paradise for the non believer. So the non believe paradise from the, is a second khabar. Okay. I haven't wrote it down, but it should be the second khabar. Okay. Okay. Now the next one, number four, fives. Um, can you choose the next student? Let's bring Sister Zamina or Sister Sakina. Sister Zamina, yeah, Sister Sakina. Uh, yeah, sir. Um, you know, for just one question, you know, yep, for go ahead. four, yep. um, you know, the Adunya, yep. so it's, um, the subject, it still doesn't take a Dhamma, it takes a Fatha on this one. Yeah, so a good question you've asked. So this noun here, Adunya, because it has Alif, alif at the end mm -hmm. itself, so because of that, the Arab is not visible. Ah, uh, Okay. So it, 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 even though it's in, so the irab is not visible, but it is situated in the place of the subject itself. Okay, because that, it still has, Can we write a hidden irab? Yes, hidden irab. Uh, excellent. So the zamma is uh, you know hidden. Yes. Then signal bismillah. Go ahead, sister. Um, so, ayatul munafiqi thalathun. Um, so, the ayatul munafiqi is the mubtada, and Excellent. thalathun is the khabar. And so, mudaf mudafile. Correct. Mudaf mudafile subject. Thalathun is the khabar itself. Right. Sister Sakina, where are you? Um, I'm just trying to find the right i'm going to leave this out because okay. we've done so as enough practice i want to go for the next part which is the important part talking about the types of khabar a predicate go ahead let's talk about the four types of predicate this is important i need to finish this before i end today's session go ahead sister sakina um okay this type is the major type of predicate that we will be dealing with sometimes the predicate is a single word as in previous examples one two three and five and sometimes it can be a word construction, such as idafa, possession construction, as shown in example four. Please note that sometimes even the subject can be a construction, as shown as in example five. Whatever the case, it is essential to identify word constructions when analysing the sentence. Incorrect identification will inherently, will inherently lead to erroneous and confused translation, sometimes the predicate can be a relative pronoun that encompasses within it an entire sentence. In example number seven, the predicate is the relative pronoun, a levina, since all relative pronouns are connected with a silla, the entire sentence dotted after it becomes part of the predicate. These types of sentences incorporating relative pronouns are frequently seen in the Quran and Hadith. Please also note that additional details can follow the predicate, such as jara constructions, example one and three, conjunctions, example four, etc. At this point, it is a bit premature to discuss these details that will be touched upon in more detail in the second volume, inshallah. Okay, let me explain to this now. So it's trying to say that sometimes you can have a complete sentences coming as the khabars itself. So here, the word Alladina is coming. Yes? Innama al mu'minuna. So al mu'minuna here is the subject. Al mu'minuna is the subject. The word Alladhi, and we have done Alladhina. Remember, remember, like in even Surah Alladhina. So Alladhina here is what is the khabar. But normally, whenever Alladhina comes, the, there is a whole sentence which comes after it. That is also part of the khabar as well. Is that clear? Is that clear for everyone? So the whole so thing everything is... that everything yes. that comes after Allah or Allah will be considered as a predicate. Yes, it, it will be considered as part. So if you if you look at this point here, since all relative pronouns, so Allah is a relative pronoun are connected with the with a sila 
the entire sentence dotted after it becomes part of the predicate. So this is what it means. It means that all of things, whenever you see the word alladhi or alladhina and there's a sentence after it, all of that is a connection, connection connective, connected sentence with alladhi or alladhina itself. And it's be, it will be deemed as part of the predicate itself. That's a bit um, interesting, but that's the way it is. Is that clear? It's so it's what it, it means that the Alazina is trying to tell you it's a warning, so you look at the sentence after it. It's not a warning as such. It, it, it's one of those nouns which has a connect, a connect it, it requires connections. So when you say that which, so even in English, when we translate alladhi means that or which. What about that or which? Then this what comes after it, it explains that what it's trying to refer to. Like sirat al -ladhina. Like in, in Surah Al-Hamd, we say sirat al -ladhina. Path of those. Who are those people? al an amta alayhim. Those people are those an amta alayhim. You favored upon them. So the rest of the words, what are they then? And are they muzaf, muzaf No, 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 no. So they are actually uh, sentences in itself. So amanu is a verb. Billahi is a preposition. Warasulihi is a preposition. Thumma is a harf. Lam is a particle. Yartabu is present tense. Jahadu is past tense. Bi amwalihim ba is harfijar. Amwal is mudaf and mudaf ilay. So these are actually uh, whole sentences, but because they are coming after Alladhi, they are deemed as Silla itself. It's an easy way of putting them. So Silla means uh, they are Connect, connected, connect, connected, okay. connected, connected sentence with okay. Alladhina. Okay. So that's so you, the only thing you need to remember here is that a predicate can be a single word. That's the only thing you need to remember. That's the first thing. Number two. Number two is this, uh, jar or majroor. Jar and majroor is what, Dr. Rahim? What does jar and majroor mean? I think he's probably, he's here. Dr. Rahim, are you, can you unmute yourself? Okay, jar and majroor means like fi, ala, and so forth. These are jar and majroor. <laughs> That can come as a khabar. That's number two. Number three. So can I ask a question? Are the, are that, is that the prepositional phrases? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah they, they will be classed as, as uh, Jarama Juru, they will be prepositions and they will be classified as the khabar itself, correct? Yes, thank you. Like here, I'll give you an example. So if you look over here, Ula'ika ala hudam mir rabbihim. So Ula'ika is the subject. Ala is harfijar. And huda is majroor. Here, yadullahi. Allah's hand is on the group. So yadullah is mudaf mudaf ilay. Subject. Ala al jama'ati is mudaf, is jar and majroor. And it's the khabar. Is that clear? Yes, it's clear. Thank you. Then next one, number three. Number three is Jumla Ismiya. So this is what I was trying to explain early on, that sometimes you can have a complete sentence, which is the Khabar itself. This is important. Listen to this carefully. Um, who should I pick on? Um, who should I choose? I need to pick a sister. Um, Zebun Nisa Kanji. Sister Zebun Nisa? Assalamu yes. Alaikum. Let's. Uh, uh, Arrajulu. What does the word Arrajulu mean? Arrajulu, the man. The man. Hua. What does Hua mean? Hua. Hua is. is. He. Uh, he. Sadiqun. Sadiqun, a pious. Truthful. Truthful. Yes. Truthful. Yes. So if we. Arrajulu means the man, okay? 
So, Ar-Rajulu is the subject because it has Alif Lam, correct? Yes. Now, ignore Ar-Rajulu at the moment. If we just say Huwa Sadiqun, how would you translate yes. in English? Huwa Sadiqun. Um, yes. uh, he, is, he is truthful. Exactly. So, he is truthful. We have is as well. Or do we have is in the translation? Yeah, because of uh, Zomatain. Yes, we have Huwa Sadiqun. So Huwa Sadiqun, in essence, is subject and predicate by itself. Yes. But it's also, so even though Huwa Sadiqun is subject and predicate, after it becomes subject and, pre and predicate, it's coming a, as a nominal sentence. So a nominal sentence can come as a khabar for a subject itself. Yes. <clears throat> is yes. That, is that clear? Yes. So a nominal sentence consisting a subject and predicate can come as a khabar for a subject itself. Sister Sakina and Sister Zamina and Sister Masuma and Nazneen. Is it clear? Yes, Sheikh. Yes. Yes. Can you repeat what did you say? A nominal sentence consisting of more than a nominal sentence consisting of a subject and predicate can come as the khabar. Because who was is being the khabar of the yeah, who was sadikun is coming as a khabar for a rajulu. So because you, the man and he is is the same, right? Yeah, yeah so the man. He is truthful. The man is, he, the man, he is truthful. Yeah. Okay. So because huwa sadikun yep. can be muftada and khabar, but then yep. the same thing can be khabar of Raju. Excellent. 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 And also, finally, you can have a verb, you can have so this is Jumla Ismiya. Okay? Arrajulu, Sadikun. It's uh, the man, he is truthful. That's the translation. Okay? Is this clear? Yes. <clears throat> okay, one second. Finally, and this is it, and that, that will be the end of the class today. Verbal sentence. So for the verbal sentence, I will bring. Sister Zinat, John Muhammad. Okay. Alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sister Zinat, al jumla fi'liya. Okay. Al jumla fi'liya. Similar to the previous discussion, the predicate can also be a verbal sentence. Again, the embedded sentence follows directly after the subject that initiates a nominal sentence and acts as a predicate. Similar to a nominal sentence, Predicate, a nominal sentence predicate, it is inappropriate to place an implied is in between. This also serves to place extra emphasis or attention to the subject being discussed, as the subject is referenced again in the verbal sentence. Please note that a verbal sentence is always initiated by a verb at the beginning. Okay, now here. So what's happening here? Okay. Yeah, so here, the previous example, Ar-Rajul Huwa Sadiqun, that was a nominal sentence. Now is giving you an example. Al-Mu'minuna Jahidu Fi Sabilillahi. Okay, here, al-mu'minuna jahidu fi sabila. So here, al-mu'minuna is the subject. Al-mu'minuna is the subject. And jahidu fi sabilillahi. It's jahidu means they struggle in the way of Allah. 
So this is a verbal sentence and the verbal sentence is coming as the khabar for al-mu'minuna. Is that clear? Yes. And because in the noun, why? Because the noun is starting the sentence. That's the reason why the verbal sentence is coming as the khabar. And finally, Allahu ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Allah is a is it an Allah is it a noun or a verb? Sister Rosie. Or sister Huma, what is Allah? It's a, it's a, it's a noun. It's a noun. Yeah, and ya'lamu ma fi samawati. He knows. Is a subject. Exactly. No, it's a ver it's a, a verb. It's a verb. Yeah, it's a verb. And it's a, a verbal sentence and it's coming as the khabar itself. Sheikh, I didn't get it. Even in the first one. Al-Mu'minu jahadu tabilillah. Al-Mu'minuna is a noun. The believers, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The believers, what are they doing? Jahidu. So jahidu struggling. is a verb. They okay. are struggling in the way of Allah. So they are struggling in the way of Allah. Um, there is no is or are, but because it's a verb, so the verb itself has its own way of translation. So we will translate as they are struggling in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So P is another preposition coming in the middle. Yes, that preposition, fi sabilillah, it's related to the verb itself. So jahidu, so you can have a preposition after a verb and that will be related to the verb. But the verb itself is the one which is the actual subject, the predicate of the sentence itself. So the, the whole thing is the predicate. Exactly. The whole thing is the predicate. And the same thing happens here. Allah is the subject. Ya'lamu ma fi samawati. Even though there's a preposition after the verb, but the whole thing itself is the predicate itself. Is that clear? The up till there, everything yeah. is predicate. But because of here, Yalamo. Yes, because of Yalamo, correct. Is that clear for everyone? Yes. Yes. Was it heavy going? No, we understood a little better. <laughs> Not complete, but we understood it. Okay, let me get something else on the screen. Give me two minutes. And, okay, take a two-minute two minute break uh, because we, it's been an hour and a half and I haven't given you a break. Take Get a drink or something because um, you deserve a drink. Because I just need two minutes, two to three minutes to finish this lesson off so that I, I've explained everything perfectly correct. I just want to use this last slide to clarify everything and that will be everything. No, this is difficult. Hey. This is Shane, can I ask something yeah. in this, um, in the verbal sentence? Yep. Uh, in both cases, there has been uh, prepositions. Prepositions have been used. Yep. So if I, if I say, Allahu ya alamu, ya mu'minina, without any preposition, Ya alamul mu'minina will be the verbal sentence? Yes, it will be a verbal sentence. It will not be a, sub, uh, a nominal sentence, correct? And correct. then that could be a, that will be a predicate as well? No, 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 no. So when so that remember there's two types of sentences. There's a verbal there's a verbal sentence and a nominal sentence. So when you have a mm -hmm. nominal sentence, you have a good question, Zahra. Uh, a nominal sentence consists of a subject and predicates. A nominal sentence consists mm -hmm. of a mubtada and khabar. But when a verb comes, it consists of a verb and a doer, fa'il. Oh, yes, yes, I get that one. But over here, if I say Allahu, yep. Ya Alamul Mu'minina. So Allahu will be the subject. Yep. Ya Alamul Mu'minina will be the predicate. The whole thing. Yes. The whole, the whole Ya Alamul Mu'minina yes. will be the predicate in this case. Yeah, Allah is the subject. Ya Alamu Mafis Samawati. That the whole thing is the actual predicate itself. Yes. But if I say like Allahu ya alamul mu'minin, let, let me, let me now, go to the, let me example. Go to the screen again. Let me go to the screen again. Where's that gone? Give me two seconds. Let me just find it. Where's it? Where it disappeared? Two seconds. 
Yeah, Allahu. Go ahead. So Allahu ya alamu ya alamul mu'minina. For example, if it's a sentence, if it, uh, I'm making a sentence, ya alamu so Allah mu'minina. He knows the mu'minin. Okay. So I can that will become a sentence, and Allahu will be the subject. Ya yeah. alamul mu'minina will be the predicate. Yes, that's right. That's right. In this case. Yep. It doesn't have it have to consist of a preposition, right? No, 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 not at all. Yeah. So a, a, ver a verbal sentence can consist of a fa'il as a doer and an object as well and a preposition. As it mentioned okay. earlier on as well, it can have a preposition, it can have an object, it can have a, a possessive pronoun like kitabi, kitabuka, any of the pronouns as well. Okay, thank you. Right. I'm good. Who should... Who shall I choose now? Let's choose. Who shall I choose? I'm thinking of. Okay, I'm gonna choose. Um, it's difficult to choose. Sister Najma Kanani, you've joined late. So Bismillah, come on the mic. Okay, I just joined. <laughs> I know, not a problem. Sorry, so because is... I do Darsa on uh, Thursday, you know, so I just finished it. Okay, that, that, that's not fair, that's not fair. Okay, let me speak Sister Sakina. Sister Sakina or Sister Zamina? I know you two sisters. Can, can you come on the mic? So once I know, then I will join. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sister, uh, Sister Sakina or Zamina, any of you? Sister Zamina or Sakina? Okay, they're not answering. Then I'll ask um, Sister Matsuma. Can you come on the mic? Matsuma? Uh, yes, Sheikh. Sorry. Okay. Now, you know we talked about in the previous one about the, the, the khabars, types of khabar. Yeah. So this is basically going to highlight everything what we have done today. And it's, it's just going to... If you want me to, I can send this across to you. And it will yeah, just... Please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, it makes everything very easy for you here. So let's go for it. Now, number one, the the khabar comes comes as a single word. Mufrad, one word. So al kitabu. Yep, al kitabu jadidun. So al kitabu has alif lam. Jadid yeah. has one. It's the zamatan means. So this is subject and predicate. Okay. Yep. Next one, al Quranu kitabullahi. Yeah. So even though Kitabullahi is mudaf mudaf ilay, yeah, it's classified as one word. Yep. Clear. Yep. Number two, jar and majroor. Jar and majroor. It's a, a preposition or sh it's called shibe jumla. So it means it's similar to a verb. Zarf is an adverb. Zarf is an adverb. Okay. Adverb is which indicates place and time. So al kitabu. So where is the subject? Where is the predicate? So al um, maktabi is the whole um, khabar. Yeah. 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 And over uh, and then fil bayti. Um, so in this one, fil bayti um, is the actual khabar. Excellent. Why? I, I, I mentioned this last lesson. So if the if the if the subject is indefinite, meaning that it comes without alif lam, then what happens? It comes. Um, it can come after the preposition, basically. Exactly. 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 So here, fil is the is the predicate. Rajulun is the subject, which is mu delayed, muakhar. Why? Because it does not have alif lam. So it's not definite. Yes. Okay. Number three. Uh, uh, Sheikh, sorry. Yep. Sorry. So is Rajulun Rajulun a predicate? Is, is no, is a subject. When will be it called object delayed? Or is it yeah, delayed? Called, yeah, whenever the whenever the subject does not have Alif Lam. Yeah. It, then the 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 predicate, which is the <gasps> The, the Jara Majroor will come before the subject itself. Okay. But then how do we translate it? So we will translate it the same as usual. In the translation, there's no difference. So you say in, in the, the house, house, in the house is a man. In the house is a man. Is okay. a man. 
Okay. In the house is a may. Yeah. Okay. So isn't isn't uh, after is yep. uh, is a predicate? So it normally is. But oh, because just... of the hurtful jar. Okay. Yeah. yeah understood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got. I got. Thank you. Okay. Next one, number three, Sister Batul, uh, Masuma. Um, so this this is the same as the second one that we did. Yep. So al kitabu is the subject, um, yep. and tahta al maktabi the predicate. Yep. Um, and and then the bottom one is um, amam al baiti. So again, it's it's delayed. Yep. So um, that bit's the predicate, and then hadikatun is the subject. Excellent. Excellent. Now, can I choose someone else for the last part? Um, Sister Sakina, can you hear me? Sister Sakina is Sister Zamina. Okay, if they're not answering that, Sister Zahra Jamal, can you come on the mic? Yes, she. Okay, now remember us. We did we did the last part. We said that the khabar can be a verbal sentence and a nominal sentence. So let's break this through and go through this. Hamidun. Okay. Hamidun, Ahu Vazirun. Hamid. His brother is a minister. So where? So so Hamid is the uh, is the subject, mm -hmm. and Akhuhu Wazirun is the nominal sentence as well as predicate. Yes, and by itself, if we break them down, how is it a, nom a, a verbal sentence, a nominal sentence? Akhuhu is mudaf mudaf ilay. It's mudaf mudaf ilay, and it's the mubtada. Okay, Wazirun mm -hmm. is khabar. So the subject and the predicate together is coming as a verbal nominal sentence and the nominal sentence nominal is sentence. coming as the khabar for Hamid itself. Is that clear? Yes. Next one. Fatima. Fatima tu indaha sayyaratun. Fatima, uh, she has a car. Yep. Um, so uh, Fatima is the subject, and then in the ha sayyaratun will be the khabar, and it's a nominal sentence. In the ha again is a mudaf mudaf ilay. Correct. And uh, uh, sayyaratun the the will be the uh, khabar of in the ha. No, no, in the ha is mudaf mudaf. So in the ha, it's um, so over here. Indaha is zarf. No, it's 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 uh, it's not mudafilay. Yeah, yeah. Indaha is with her. Zarf. With her is car. Yeah. So indaha is zarf. Indaha is zarf like here. Mm -hmm. Tahta. So indaha is zarf, and it's khabari muqaddam. Sayyaratun is the mubtada. And this is a verbal, a nominal sentence. And over here, jumla fi'liya bilalun kharaja min al fasli. Bilalun kharaja min al fasli. Bilal, he left from the classroom. Correct. So Bilal okay. is the mubtada, and kharaja min al fasli is the predicate and yep. a verbal sentence. At talibatu the hab, the habna ilal madrasati. Excellent. The students, uh, they went towards the school. So a talibatu will be the subject and the habna ilal madrasati will be the predicate and a verbal sentence. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajum. First of all, I would apologize to everyone that um, it was a long lesson, but this lesson is a very important lesson. If you have absorbed everything, you have, um, you have learned up to 25% of Arabic grammar. Um, which is called syntax Naho. This is how important this lesson was. Subhanallah, I was ready to run away. <laughs> can, I, can I just ask you a question? Thank you. Uh, why did we call this a verbal sentence when it is Bilalun? And the recording, please. Yes. So the reason why, because Bilalun, um, so here, Kharaja is a verb. Yes. Haraja mil fast because Haraja is a verb, he exited from the classroom. So this is a verbal sentence, and the verbal sentence is coming after a noun. So when a verbal sentence comes after a noun, it's normally a predicate for the subject. Okay. 
and even over here do you remember in lesson number i think it was lesson number three or four when we when i spoke to you if i said when i said to yourself if the noun comes before the verb then the noun the verb has to correspond with the noun because the noun now the noun which has come in the beginning of the sentence is the subject do you remember that yeah in this sentence, verbal sentence, all the Arabs are changed. Because before we saying when it's a nominal sentence, and the Arabs have to be same. Yes, but here... yeah, it, that is, sister, that is in regards to the default era. Like, like here, Al Kitabu Jadidun. Do you remember this? It gets a Dhamma Tanween. This is getting Dhamma Tanween. But as we get more technical, then the even though it's, it's Jara Majroor, but this place which they are situated in, it's the nominative case. You will say, you will say that it's not visible, even though it's al maktabi on the desk, but al maktabi as we know, is the predicate, and all predicates should get a dhamma tanween. Is that clear? Yeah. So you will say it's hidden. The dhamma tanween is hidden. So that's why it becomes difficult. You yeah. don't know when it is hidden, when it's not. Yeah, so it's not visible. It's not visible. Right. Sheikh, in this uh, sentence, Fatima to Indaha Sayyaratun. Yep. Fatima is the subject. Yep. Indaha is. Zarf. Uh, Indaha Sayyaratun is a predicate, but if I look at it uh, separately, Indaha Sayyaratun. Yep. Sayyaratun is the subject? No. It's and Indaha is the predicate? Yes, that's right. Indaha is mudaf, mudaf ilay, and Inda is zarf, it's adverb. Sayyaratun is mubtada mu'akhar, delayed mubtada. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Right. Okay. That was a very well. Alhamdulillah, you done very well, um, Sister Sadia. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Um, I want you to listen to this lesson, Sister Sadia, for you to be able to absorb everything. Um, this is an important lesson. Well, I think one of the most important lessons I've gave so far. Check. Can so I request something? Alaikum salam. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Sheikh, I wanted to say, please, can you, in the group, can, will you send the uh, uh, book three, the PDF for book three? I'll do that now. I've, I've completely forgot. I'll, 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 Thank I'll, you. I'll send that now. Thank you. Any very questions much. from anyone? Could you please send today's uh, lessons as soon as possible to us? Yes, I'll, I'll send that across, Doctor. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Really, I missed this lesson there. So, um, I was not really ready today, but I will certainly catch up and will be very regular from next time. Sorry about it. No, no, I understand that you got the little ones as well. The house is understandable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Inshallah. Uh, any other questions from anyone? So, Sheikh, please send it so that we can review it and, you know, whatever yeah, we have. Yeah, I'm going to send book three and I'll send the recording as well to yourselves. Thank you. So, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. اللهم كل وليك الحجة من الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعين حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا واجعلنا من أنصاره وشيتك جدك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وأجل فرجهم. So today's lesson was the most. This is the most difficult lesson. Which I'm going to give it in book two. There's nothing more difficult than what I've taught you today. So everything else is going to be easy. Um, I knew this lesson was going to be the most uh, challenging lesson. So Alhamdulillah, everyone has done very well. Um, so apart from that, the rest of the book is easy. Nothing else is difficult. It's only today's lesson. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> You're not honest. I'll promise you. I'll promise you. That this is it. Uh, because I'm trying to give you additional information, and I'm trying to prepare yourselves to read Arabic books. Uh, that's the reason why today's lesson was at uh, uh, a higher level, uh, quite, a, I'll say, intermediate to advanced level, which I've taught you today. Sheikh, we didn't get the today's lessons yet. To, um, we, what do you mean? The book three, but not the lesson. Yeah, I'm going to send that across but, to you. I'll send that across okay. to you now. Okay, good. So any other questions before we end?